Now, I've played some weird games in my day, but this, this took me by surprise. Before I decided to review it, I had only seen a single YouTube video that painted this game as some sort of strange adventure game with sexy enemies and dialogue with enough sass in it to be its own parody anime. But what I got ended up being a strange adventure game with sexy enemies and dialogue with enough sass to be its own parody anime. And yet the game still surprised me, at every turn at that, with just how far I was willing to go in that direction. So buckle up, because we are going to dive straight into Hakoniwa Explorer Plus by... Suxmetadium. I murdered that. And not a day too soon, since I still need to play a bunch of games for Hollow... Motherfuck. Yeah, so this game doesn't really have a story per se. It's almost entirely exploration with a tiny bit of world building via dialogue with NPCs. There is a funny explanation for the events of the game near the end, but saying what that is would kinda spoil the comedy of the reveal, so I'll leave that for you to discover. Honestly though, this game is one of those titles I would really say needs to be experienced raw to get the full effect. You know, the biggest laughs, the most what the fuck am I even looking at. So I am a bit limited in what I'm willing to talk about. So what can I talk about? Well, first off, this is a beautiful game. Just look at those lush pixel graphics, how everything's so vibrant and moving, like you just lose yourself in it. No seriously, you can easily lose your character in some of these stages, especially the more elaborate ones. It's worth it though, because having so much going on inside such a small playable area, it just brings all of the areas alive in a way I haven't seen done in an isometric title before. Now, the player starts out with an old school Q&A session where it asks you your gender, how good you are at video games, and reacting to the player accordingly, before dropping you into his starting area with the lovely Tsukumizu. Talking to her reveals you are at an inn within First Town, a perfect starting area for adventurers like yourself. And just like that, the world is your oyster. You can go into the world map where different stages can be located or unlocked via either simply running around or talking to the locals in the towns. Most stages are very unique and creative despite the size limit which I'll go over in the gameplay section. And you can be expected to go into locations like Forgotten Ruins with greenery overtaking the old stone, wide beaches, maze-like forests that you can actually get lost in, and even as early as the second stage you can go but real quick, let's go back to that first town, because there's something I have to do, a rite of passage, a sort of feat to show that my character is grown and ready for this sort of adventure. I'm joking. <laughs> yes, you can slap NPCs on the ass in this game. Though more for comedic effect, as only Tsukumizu actually has a sprite for it. Because, you know, we're not playing an Aeroge here. Are you sure about that? Interacting with the NPCs in the game is interesting to say the least. You don't actually talk to them or anything, but they react to the things you do to them. Bump into them from behind, they get pissed. Jump onto their head, they get pissed. Bug them too much by repeatedly instigating dialogue, they get pissed. And oh crap. Don't worry though, even if you kill them, they do respawn, so this isn't some alternate genocide route. Instead, it's just another level of lighthearted interaction with the NPCs. And that is something that really summarizes this entire game. Lighthearted. This game is basically you going around fighting monsters, checking out the scenery, and meeting NPCs with their own unique dialogue, pointing the player towards newer areas, or poking fun at the genre. Some of it can be hit or miss, but there are some real gems in the game, especially with the sassy Tsukumizu, who for some reason pops up at the start of almost every dungeon. Speaking of dungeons, let's finish off this section with the elephant in the room for anyone who already knows about this game. The NPC designs. Now you might be thinking, 
eh, they seem pretty standard for a fantasy game. You know, the peasants look like peasants, the old people look like old people, and Tsukumizu, well, she's an exception. But I'm not talking about the regular NPCs. No, I'm talking about the monster girls, cause this game is chock full of them. Sure, it starts out with the regular slime enemies, but it quickly evolves into jellyfish girls, sea lamias, mimic girls that sometimes drop from the sky, bee girls, spider girl hordes. This baby can fit so many monster girls. Sure, there are some normal enemies mixed in, but the creator clearly had a particular vision for this game. But we'll talk about that in the next section. Gameplay in Hakuniwa Explorer Plus is kind of a mixed bag. There's a lot of things I really dig that you don't normally see in a video game, but the core combat itself is a bit lacking. The first thing that really strikes me with this game is its attention to detail and how things that you normally don't factor into a video game actually matter. Magic scrolls in your inventory can get wet and unusable when you descend underwater or get hit by too many water spells. Attacks can cut the grass around the area, slime enemies degrade your equipment, and the slime that you collect from them can be thrown at enemies to degrade and drop their equipment. And that's just the tip of the iceberg for this sort of stuff. You even have a stamina bar that has your character do a cute little exhausted pant when it's depleted. Wait a minute, stamina bar. Dark Souls! Now don't get it twisted, there's a lot of cool stuff in this game, all the different weapons and styles available to you, two-handed sword, axe and shield, magic wands, I even got a sight that flew around like a boomerang. The problem lies in the hit detection. I can attack a flying enemy by swinging at the air below them, and at the same time have my sword pass through an enemy like they're a ghost. And even if it does hit, Attacks sometimes have this strange delay between the swing and the attack dealing damage. It all results in melee combat being much more about mashing than it is about tactical swings, even despite having a chargeable power attack, but I mainly use that to cast spells rather than go for big melee damage. To alleviate this, you can use some of the ranged options in the game, such as magic spells, grenades, other ranged items that you collect across the game, but they all have a singular problem attached to them. What are you aiming at? Something you might have noticed with the gameplay in the background, the character only faces one of two directions when he attacks. Now, you can attack in all directions, but the floatiness of the movement had me constantly shooting in the wrong direction early on. No joke, I tried to play this game with the keyboard initially, but I had to jump to my old dusty PS3 controller just a few hours in just so I could have slightly better control over my character. The map sizes were another thing I had to get used to since it's so small a lot of the time. Even in the larger stages it only shows a small portion of the stage instead of the whole thing, kind of like playing Minecraft on its lowest setting. Initially I wanted to give my enemies a wide berth so I could easily dodge their attacks, but quickly found out if I got too close to the edge, and now I'm in another area. I guess I'll just go back to the enemies and the enemies respond. The loot is missing and I feel like an idiot. It's just something I got adjusted to, but every once in a while I still do accidentally trigger transitions and it just sucks every time. The last real complaint I had with the game actually ended up correcting itself the further I got into the game, funny enough. I was ready to tear into this game over its inventory system, or lack thereof, because seriously, you get around 10 slots in an exploration game where you pick up items automatically. English mother- Luckily enough, defeating bosses yes we're going to talk about that, increases both your inventory slots as well as storage slots, making the auto pickup less of a problem. But here's the thing though, actually trying to manage your equipment feels like you're going against how the game was intended to be played. The game has all sorts of weapons and armors with cool effects and magical properties, but none of them are unique. Almost all the items you get, whether it be from bosses, common drops, or things you have enchanted, can be replaced by another weapon just as quickly. No need to bother with any inventory management or durability restoration when your weapon breaks, just switch to another one, because after a point the ground will be littered with weapons. You should read the descriptions of your equipment though, because aside from just having funny flavor text, sometimes they can convey buffs or debuffs that do mess with combat. I spent a good chunk of the game with my character having these strange hearts over his head, exhausting him randomly until I gave up and checked the wiki, 
to find that carrying around a magical schoolgirl swimsuit was, and I kid you not, giving my character an aroused debuff. So the core combat is balanced equally between having a bunch of options and having poor but not deal breaking controls, what else can you do in the game? Well, since there's no real plot to follow, the only concrete objective in the game is achievement collecting. And there are a ton of them. Sure you have the obvious clear X dungeon or defeat Y enemy, and some challenge achievements like get up to the top of Z without falling, but this game also has plenty of funny joke achievements to collect like buying armor from a creepy dude who only sells Tsukumizu. I really don't want to go into too much detail here because, just like a lot of other parts of the game, the fun is in the surprise. I will say though that there are an achievement or two related to your character's karma, so do note that the game does track every head stomp, murder, and butt slap you do to the NPCs. Uh, and now it's about time to talk about the bosses. Yes, I saved one of the most interesting aspects of the game for last, because holy shit, the game dev must have really liked their giant monster girls, cause it shows here. As you would expect, every stage has their bosses, and those can range from vampire chicks to giant slimes and even mythical dragons, but if you're not familiar with this title, you are in for a surprise when it comes to the actual map bosses. Every single map boss is a gigantic monster waifu with unique attacks and battle strategies ready to stomp you out of existence. Running around just to find all of these is a treat in itself because each boss is radically different from the others. Just look out for their grab because... Yeah, one thing I did overlook about this game is just how, um, handsy the monster girls are. Now this is not an H game, or at least I don't think it is, but the grab animations are pretty interesting to say the least. And that is with the regular mobs. When it comes to the boss enemies, holy shit. It also drains your stamina, I mean level, to just hammer in the implications. But don't worry, killing the enemy in question does return you most if not all of the XP lost. So the enemies are interesting, the exploration is fun, and the bosses might have immigrated from a more mature genre. That pretty much covers the main points of the game, so with that, let's go on to my final thoughts. Hako Niwa Explorer Plus is an interesting game. It's something that I found more enjoyment just trying to casually experience rather than something to take all seriously. The issue with the combat and the inventory controls could have been deal breaking in any other game, but the uniqueness of the title kept me coming back. I mean, where else can I find something like this? The second I started taking it less seriously, my enjoyment jumped up tremendously. Goofing around, looking at the scenery, throwing fireballs at civilians, getting by mud women, this game is way too anime not to enjoy playing. And on top of that, the game is pretty damn cheap, making a lot of my problems with the game easy to overlook. So at 9.99, my final rating for Hakuniwa Explorer Plus would be a solid buy. Nine bucks for this experience is a solid deal, despite how simple and unguided the game is overall. If you want a more directed experience with, you know, a story, this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you are okay with just exploring, achievement, hunting, and waifuing, I'd recommend it. Okay, end of review time. Let me know your opinions on this game by leaving a comment down below, check me out on Twitter, Patreon, and Discord if you want to support the content that I make, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!